Welcome into NFL Daily presented by Manscaped. When you head over to manscaped.com slash chat and use promo code chat at checkout too, you'll save 20% off and get free shipping on all their fantastic men's grooming products, including the new Lawnmower 4.0, which we'll tell you more about later on in today's video. But we're kicking things off with some Tim Tebow discussion once again because, well, you know, Tebow is not officially signed yet with the Jaguars. Although it seems like that's the route we're trending here. The decision is expected to be made soon. We'll get into Urban Meyer's comments here in a second. But you guys know the Tim Tebow story, right? Hasn't played a regular season NFL game since 2012. He's now 33 years old, but he might be moving to tight end. So we'll stylize things as Tim capital T E. Bo, as in tight end Bo. Get it? It's not that funny. Anyway, here's what Urban Meyer had to say about Urban, about Tim Tebow and when he could sign. I've leaned on my staff for that, and I imagine a decision is going to be soon. We'll have a chat on Sunday. Of course, that was today, and as we film this, no official move has been announced yet by Jacksonville in terms of signing Tim Tebow. There have been reports it is expected, but it's dragging out. Now, you look at the tight end depth chart for Jacksonville, and it's not very good. Chris Manhurts is tight end one. James Asanasi has played a bit in the NFL. Luke Farrell was a day three pick who can block and fits well. Knows Urban Meyer quite well on top of that. So tight end is a need, but does Tim Tebow actually fill that particular need? Well, some current and former NFL players were not too happy. But Devin Bush, the Steelers linebacker, tweeted out earlier this week, Tebow got a job before Kaepernick. Wait till we play Jacksonville with the sleeping Z emoji thrown in there. And Des Bryant threw this in. So Tebow hasn't played an NFL game in damn near a decade, and it's that simple. No hate, but you got to be kidding me. I mean, I get where these players are coming from. Tebow hasn't played tight end. He hasn't played any skill position on offense outside of quarterback. I think it's a shot with Urban Meyer. He was like there was one NFL team that would ever look at Tim Tebow, and it was Urban Meyer in Jacksonville. And if you want a tight end, there are better ones out there. Right, speaking of Florida players, Trey Burton, a former quarterback who moved to tight end, has shown more success in the NFL. Virgil Green, Richard Rodgers, Demetrius Ayer, other, all these tight ends are out there who at least intrigue you at some capacity about being a fit in the NFL and with Jacksonville. So what do you guys think then? Should the Jags go out and sign Tim Tebow? This question is the pinned comment on today's video. So if you get the ad break here on YouTube, scroll on down and get your votes in. Why for yes or and for no? The New York Giants have added a former Dave Gettleman player. That is Kelvin Benjamin, who reportedly is set to make the move to tight end. Now, the Giants are adding him as a tight end receiver. How we get to Joe Judge's comment, but tight end appears to be Kelvin Benjamin's future role here in the NFL. Remember, drafted by Dave Gettleman in 2014. Another example of, you know who you know, often matters quite a bit in the NFL. Last time he played in a regular season game, 2018 with the Chiefs. Now, despite the report that Benjamin would be a tight end in New York, which I do believe is going to be the case, Joe Judge didn't want to give it all away, at least immediately. Here's what he had to say. In terms of Benjamin working different positions today, we're going to work different guys at a variety of things right now. He's always been a big receiver. He'll work receiver. He'll work a little bit of flex tight end as well. I wouldn't really kind of, you know, pin him down to any one position at this point. But I think big slot receiver, inline tight end, probably a little bit more of the former than the latter, but tight end appears to be Benjamin's home in New York, where there are all of the tight ends already. Evan Ingram, who was a pro bowler somehow, some way. Kyle Rudolph signed, coming off his own foot injury in, uh, as tight end two. Uh, Levine Toilolo, Caden Smith are decent blockers. Those could be tight end three or four in some order. Cole Hicatini has spent some time in the NFL on various practice squads. Kelvin Benjamin now throws in there, plus some dudes that you guys have absolutely never, ever heard of. But that is a deep, deep tight end room, nine deep in total. Makes it a, a difficult path for Benjamin to make the roster this year. We've seen the highs and lows over his career. He started things off so, so well, but across his overall career, things have not exactly been perfect by any stretch of the imagination for Kelvin Benjamin. Some depression, some weight issues as well. Tight end makes sense for him, but it's also a new position. So how exactly he adjusts to that? 
Well, I guess we'll see in Giants training camp as that moves forward. So who is more likely to make their respective team? Type TT for Tim Tebow or type in KB for Kelvin Benjamin. Which one do you guys think? Let me know in the comments section. Now, as mentioned, today's show presented by Manscaped. When you go to manscaped.com slash chat and you use promo code chat, which should be automatically applied using that URL, but just in case we're telling you what it is, you'll save 20% off and get free shipping on all their fantastic men's grooming products, including the just-released and brand-new Lawnmower 4 Point. Oh, it's upgraded, it's got a better charger, it's got multiple different heads and handles to adjust just how tight you want your trim and shave to be down there. It's more ergonomic, it's got, you know, so waterproof, so all the great things the Lawnmower 3.0 did. It's just upgraded. It's better in the end. So check the comment section, check the description as well. We will put that link in there for you guys. It's manscaped.com slash chat, and don't forget promo chat if needed. Let's go to Arizona again. Jordan Hicks, the latest around the linebacker here. The Cardinals are letting Hicks search for a trade. That is the plan here for Arizona. Now, the Eagles and Bengals suggested his fits by Bleacher Report, but the reason why Arizona is allowing him to go search for a new team, he's not going to start, and the Cardinals have made this pretty clear. Zayvon Collins and Isaiah Simmons on the interior – those are going to be the two starting linebackers in the Arizona Cardinals, what I'm going to call base, quote-unquote, 3-4 defense. Collins and Simmons are 1-2 in whatever order you want, both first-round picks. Then there's Jordan Hicks, and then I guess maybe Tanner Vallejo ends up playing that role as well in terms of a backup position. But in the end, it's pretty clear what's going to happen for Arizona. They are at least allowing Jordan Hicks the opportunity to go search for a new team to go search for a new destination and to go somewhere where he can have a little bit more success and more playing time. They are allowing Hicks the chance to go search for a trade. But I do want to focus more on these two trade ideas floated out by Bleacher Report. The first one, one we've mentioned before, what about a Zach Ertz for Jordan Hicks swap? It does make some sense. Arizona could use a tight end. The Eagles could use a linebacker. Hicks is very familiar with Philadelphia. It does intrigue me. Of course, it also brings up the, the, the situation of, well, what's the value of Zach Ertz? I think the Cardinals would ask for something back beyond just Zach Ertz. I think value-wise, even though both guys are probably going to decline, contract-wise, I think it favors Hicks a little bit more. So I think Arizona would want a little bit more back. Now, their other trade idea was the Bengals get Jordan Hicks and the Cardinals get a 2022 fourth-round selection. Now... I think this is too much money, I think, or too much value. I don't think Hicks is worth a fourth-round pick at this point. The Bengals have invested a lot in linebackers. It's not their biggest need. It is a need and a potential fit there. But I don't think a fourth-rounder is the right value for Hicks. I'd say more of a fifth- or sixth-rounder fits it a little bit better. So which trade, then, would you guys rather take? You going with the Bengals one or the Eagles one? I'm taking the Bengals' offer if that would ever come through because... I mean, that's a fourth-round pick. That's a pretty return on investment. But get your votes in in the comments section. Let's talk Cleveland Browns now, namely the situation for Marvin Wilson and the undrafted free agency steal as he's being hyped by Sports Illustrated and others, which, for the record, I am inclined to agree with if the medical checks out. Medical was a big reason why Marvin Wilson was not signed. Now, we haven't really mentioned this too much in depth, but the Browns did win a bidding war for Marvin Wilson with the guaranteed compensation roughly equivalent to a sixth-round pick. At a certain point in the draft, by the way, you kind of reach the spot where these players don't want to get drafted. They'd rather go sign somewhere where they have a better chance to make a, a, a big impact. And I think for Marvin Wilson, it's probably about what ended up happening by the time we got to the 200s or something in that range, or even the 170s in terms of draft pick status. So we did a video about all the best undrafted free agent signings, but is Marvin Wilson the best one? Get your votes in for me. Type one for yes or type in zero for no. Is Marvin Wilson the best UDFA signing in 2021? Get your votes in. One for yes or zero for no. Now a big reason why Wilson went undrafted was the regression that we saw from 2019 to 2020. I was excited 
about Marvin Wilson after 2019. I saw a very productive player who could play one technique and three technique, who offered pass rushing value and some good run stopping. I thought he could have a Derrick Brown type season and go in the first round. And we got the exact opposite. He was banged up again. He was playing five tech defensive end, and it wasn't really a fit for him. The medicals popped up in season and after the year as well, and I think that's a big reason why he went undrafted. But the player we saw in 2020 was not the same in 2019. But now he goes to Cleveland, who let go of Sheldon Richardson. Andrew Billings is there, Malik Jackson, Sheldon Day, Jordan Elliott. It was also Tommy Togiai, the uh, rookie that they took out of Ohio State. Forgot to mention him those players give them a or those options give Wilson a chance maybe it's practice squad year one but I would not rule out Wilson making this Browns team especially given how much they invested in him we're chatting Baltimore Ravens now as the hype train around Rashad Bateman continues here's what John Harbaugh the Ravens head coach had to say on Bateman at rookie minicamp he's a quick learner he's everything we thought he would be in terms of athleticism the skill set that's usually the case, but not always the case. What you see is not always what you get. You don't know until you get them out there in really the first mini camp. And I would say that he is as advertised from a talent standpoint. Now, I think Bateman is going to have a chance to make a real impact early on this Ravens offense. For the time being, we'll put him at wide receiver three. But I think Marquise Brown might be playing some slot for them and then puts Bateman on the outside. And given what we've seen from Brown in the past, I think Bateman is in a position to really thrive for this Ravens organization. They have been looking for a legitimate outside threat at wide receiver one who's a bigger body. They tried it with Miles Boykin. They tried it with Des Bryant. They're bringing in Sammy Watkins as well. But I believe that Bateman is in position to really, really impress. I think he has the opportunity to step up and emerge as a potential dynamic option earlier in his career than maybe even Marquise Brown has fared so far. I had Bateman as a top 20 player in the NFL draft. He was one, my number 18 overall guy, as you see here, my wide receiver four. I thought getting him in round one, number 27, was an absolute steal as far as potential first round steals go. I think he even has a chance, as weird as this might be, to lead the team in receiving in year one. I'm not going to rule that out quite yet. So get your votes in for me. Of the big three receivers, not tight ends, receivers for the Ravens, who do you believe will be the leading wide receiver? Type MB for Marquise Brown, type SW for Sammy Watkins, or type RB for Rashad Bateman. Get your votes in right now. Let's talk Najee Harris now in the Pittsburgh Steelers as much was made about Travis Etienne getting some wide receiver run in Jacksonville, but Pittsburgh's doing the exact same thing with Najee Harris. And because I think Pittsburgh has a bit more credi credibility in recent years than, say, Jacksonville, this flew under the radar a little bit more. But Harris is getting some wide receiver work early. Maybe not pure receiver like Etienne, but he is getting involved there, including some as an ex-outside receiver. Something we've seen Pittsburgh do in the past with guys like, say, Le'Veon Bell, who was heavily involved in both the run game and the passing game. And it leads me to believe that the Steelers' plan here, their end goal, is to find a way to get the Steelers and get Najee Harris involved, not just in the ground game, but in the passing game as well. And Najee did that, especially in 2020, more so than his previous years. Now, I don't think current Najee Harris is quite as good as prime Lev Bell was in the passing game, but I think he is trending at least in the correct direction, where he offered more big plays and offered more passing value as well. And getting him trained at receiver will be helpful if and when the Steelers say, want to go in empty personnel looks and put Najee Harris out there at wide receiver. Now, here's what he had to say when asked him talk, talking about his role. I'm going to be utilized everywhere. So they want me to know multiple positions. It's a lot more film work than college, but I don't have school anymore. So I'm glad about that. I have no issue with spending that much time in the film room. It's something I like. I am ready for the challenge. It's something that they picked me for. In the end, I fully expect Najee Harris to be heavily utilized by Pittsburgh. 
You guys, in dynasty drafts and fantasy drafts, this is the rookie back that you want. He's going to come in and immediately be this team's leading, receipt, or leading rusher, and if he's involved in the passing game, plenty of upside in that area as well.